first. They took your family and your riches. Then they took your health and your pride. Finally, they left you to die. What will you do, Exile, when there is nothing left but to live or die? Chosen, what will you become? Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with the first episode of Conan Exiles. Typically not the sort of game I play, nor not the type of game I usually put on the channel, but there is a story here, a story that I very much want to dig into. And uh, yeah, that's basically the basis of why I wanted to play this game. Uh, it was kind of one of those sort of deep dive sort of games that lets you get immersed in a story while also allowing the gameplay to come to the forefront. Uh, didn't expect <laughs> this game to have that, but it's there, and I enjoy it. So here we go. Uh, I've been on a Conan Exiles kick for the last four months, uh, <laughs> just about basically dropping all other games <laughs> in the process. Um, might have been closer to like three months, but still, it has been a long time. I've been playing this game. I know some of the ins and outs, not all of them. Do not look at me like I'm an expert, because I'm not, but I very much want to get into this game so I can show off some of the story elements that are just sitting in the background waiting to be discovered because that's what this game is basically like uh, most of them you have to dig for them you have to get into these areas that will allow you to learn the story and I find that awesome so uh, let's get into really what we're doing here race um can go with hyborian but basically there's a whole list of races within the conan universe and some of them are you know based somewhat on uh past uh <laughs> past what's the word i'm looking for um proto-civilizations, I guess I should say, for lack of a better phrase. Um, yeah, and most of it was uh, made up in the author's own mind due to the fact that he didn't have a lot of education in most of these subjects, so he just made it up as he went along, but just borrowed names from here and there of things he did know, like the Sumerians. Um, this is actually the base race of Conan himself in the comics. Uh, barbaric and warlike, the Sumerians are the descendants of the ancient Atlanteans. They fight on foot, mainly, and make savage raids on their neighbors to the east, north, and south. We're going to play as that because I don't see why not. Religion. There's a number of different religions. Uh, Conan himself is a worshipper of Krom, which has no specialization and no avatar. Krom gives a man courage at birth, 
and the will and might to kill his enemies. It is useless to call upon him, as he is a gloomy, savage god who hates weaklings. He is more likely to send forth dooms and deaths from his great mountain. He offers no advantage nor avatar to call upon. This would be a little hard mode, <laughs> doing it with Krom. Uh, then again, I have never played with Krom, so I don't know. Uh, but I do know that a lot of the other ones have uh, little shrines and whatnot to call upon. Uh, I've never done Mitra, never done Set, never done Yogg. I know how Yogg works, but I've never done it. Uh, and Zath. This one is, uh, <laughs> this one <laughs> is not good for arachnophobes, and I know at least three or four of my followers are, so I'm not going to do that just for their sake. Um, Durkito <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is one I usually do. Um, yeah, some of the, uh, some of the descriptions are wild. <laughs> <laughs> the dual nature of Durkito encourages her worshippers to walk the knife blade between lust and death. Her northern cult, worshipped in Shem and Stygia, is worshipped via elaborate orgies that include <laughs> bestiality and necrophilia. We, we, just, we just tend to ignore that part. We just ignore that part. We just, we just ignore that. We just ignore all of that. That part is nope. Mm -mm, nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And, uh, nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Her southern cult, worshipped in the Black Kingdoms, is focused primarily on sacrifice and death. Those who call upon her avatar will see that her dual nature is built into her very form. Which, yeah, makes sense. Ymir, which is one I've dabbled in recently. Uh, Ymir is the lord of war and storms. Frost giants are said to be the male children of Ymir, and his singular daughter, Atali, is said to haunt the battlefields of men, luring them to their death in the frozen wastes of the north. According to the Nordheimers, when a warrior falls in battle, they go to Valhalla. This is basically a take on the Norse ideology. The great feasting hall of Ymir to feast and fight forever. When invoked, Ymir takes the form of a frost giant, wielding an enormous axe and leaves a trail of frost in his wake. Which is, you know, again, something I haven't done myself. Yogg, I know <laughs> how it works due to a couple friends who have also played this game and have very much taken to Yogg's thing. As you can see... Flesh preparation and cannibalism are tacked on. So, you know, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yogg, also known, also known as the Lord of Empty Abodes, I wonder why, is a beastly god worshipped primarily by the cannibal tribes of Darfar. Yogg offers a strength in battle and victory over foes. In return, the devotees of Yogg are expected to engage in ritual cannibalism. <laughs> Yogg worshippers can expect to gain strength and vitality by consuming the flesh of human foes, and his avatar takes the form of a blasphemous flying horror. Well, then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am kind of tempted to try Krom if for no other reason than to sate my curiosity into how his religion plays. But that's where it ends. <laughs> so we move on to voice. Oh, we're already on learn. Good. The gods are watching. I, I find that's close enough to my actual voice. Kind of. Somewhat. You know. If I try. Anyway. <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, I think Desperate's probably close. Cut me down. Please. Yep, Desperate's probably closer to my actual voice, but I prefer to learn. Death is coming. Learn makes me sound better than I actually am. Learn makes me sound less stupid. Um, head options. 
Uh, let's go to this one. Yeah, that works. Hair. Where's the hair that looks close to mine? There we go. Close enough. That's good. All right. That's decent. I browse go there, I guess. Um, I browse that look like mine. Uh, kinda. Kinda with this, but not. It's a little too thick. Oh, not even close. <laughs> Lord eyebrows. <laughs> oh Jesus. Japanese Lord eyebrows. Yes, let's go with that. No, no. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's close enough. It's close enough. Color's right. Facial hair. Now this <laughs> looks a little patchy. Uh, the facial hair tech is uh, leaves something to be desired, but it's good. It's good enough. It's good enough. And we will go with the same color as the hair. You see what I mean? Like the darker it gets, the more patchy it looks, but otherwise it looks okay. It does look okay. It could be worse. All right. Eyeshadow, that's a thing as well. Um, yeah, that's the base one you start on without. It basically looks like this. And then, like, there's this. <laughs> this is a lot of, like, war paint looking eyeshadow. I'm just going to go without this time around. Face details. Okay, let's see. Can I. Yeah, a little. Actually, my jaw's not that thick. There we go. Well, that's a little better. Chin, uh, trying to get an angle on how this adjusts the chin. Oh, it does the bottom, huh? Uh, not that thick. That's good. Chin's not that big. Uh, cheeks, a little on the semi skinnier side. Height is not that, not that high. There we go. Width for nose. Eh, my nose is pretty wide. A uh, scale. I'm trying to get the side profile to look right. Eh, uh, yeah, that's good enough, I think. Yeah, that's close enough. Mouth thickness. <laughs> Not that thick. Uh, I think this is probably close enough. Uh, ears. Yeah, let's put them a little closer to the side of the head. Scale. Uh, it's about the right size. Maybe a little smaller. Yeah, that'll work. Eyes are fine. Spacing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then we go with green, which is barely detectable. Almost to the point that it doesn't matter. But uh, if I move, if I move this too much, it adjusts the cursor, so it changes the color as well. All right, good body features. Uh, <laughs> really, you had to show that little bit at the bottom, huh? Um, <laughs> you can change the physique uh, to make them taller or shorter if you need to. Uh, still around a basic size. Um, gonna go just shy of big boy. Um, but around here, this would be about maybe 5'11, 5 5'10 5 in uh, presumably how the height structure works. Uh, physique, nudity. <laughs> you can only go up to partial unless you own a server. In which case you can then do whatever the hell you want with it but uh partial <laughs> let's go with none for now <laughs> just to save me youtube's already gonna hate this freaking <laughs> playthrough so <laughs> no point <laughs> no point in <laughs> adding to the hate that youtube will throw upon me physique eh, let's go with yeah that's good enough boobs <laughs> change the size of my pecs and go real small or go real big. <laughs> it's gonna get somewhere in the middle. There we go. That's good. And I can't adjust it down and down <laughs> because I'm already not allowing nudity. So uh, endowment is not something I can adjust. Uh, <laughs> which is 
Probably for the best. <laughs> Finalize character. Alrighty. Here lies... Go with changing it from my username to just doing my actual name, Stray Cat. Sumerian, condemned to death and exile for crimes including spreading malicious rumors, combo skipping, and incorrect handling of cocks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I lucked out here because sometimes it can say like really horrendous stuff, but then it'll come out with funny shit like this. <laughs> because it gives like a list of three crimes you could be condemned to death and exile for. <laughs> Some of them are really bad, but these ones are some of the funniest ones I've seen. <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, any who remove this body, living or dead, from the cross will be flayed alive, along with all members of their family. Whoa! Wow, okay. Uh... Who is sitting here to check on that? I presume nobody. Alright, let's confirm. And we're good. During the year of the Cobra, a prisoner captured by unknown means was transported into the exiled lands, crucified, and left to die for crimes that they may or may not have committed. Death comes swiftly on black wings until fate intervenes. Thirsty, dead man. Shall I cut you down from that corpse tree? I might kill you. Cuts the right word. You yeah. civilized men are soft. Excuses. Your lives are not nailed to your spines. I mean, true. Ow. That hurts a little. Also, I'm kind of nailed to the tree, so cutting me down is not a good <laughs> endeavor to be going with. Where I come from, we kill our enemies in battle. We don't leave them in the desert to die like dogs. Well, I would know. I'm you. Well, I mean, so, of you. Of you people. live again, dead man. Apparently I do. This land does not love men. are marked, and you cannot cross the ghost fence wearing that. <laughs> it might have been kinder to leave you on the cross. Live. Love. Burn with life. Slay and survive. We'll meet again, dead man. And he walks off into oncoming storm. We try to walk away.
And now we load in. <laughs> Alrighty, and that is the beginning. That, of course, being Conan, who helped us off of the corpse tree, as he called it. And here we are. The middle of the desert. All right. Now, first thing we notice is this big old slab here that glows when we walk towards it. Behold, Pondit One, the very boundaries of civilization. Beyond the passage of our highways lie the wild places of the world where untamed savages make endless war upon each other. Cannot pass into the endless wastes enslaved. Your bonding prevents it. Return. Follow the road. Any road. All roads lead to the city. Alrighty. And now I can collect stones, which I will need to do like plant fiber as well, which is, again, something I'll need to do. And... There should be branches eventually popping up. I don't think. It'll be a ways, but... And you also see that there's food and water up in the, uh, Top left corner there underneath the health and stamina bar because there is stamina. There we go. Gotta climb, drink, and eat as my uh, mission objectives for my journey, which will be completed momentarily. But first, we have to escape this desert. Might as well knock out climbing. <laughs> climb basically any surface, some of it not all that well, but you can climb almost every surface, even the ones you build yourself, which is nice. And there will be a lot of building, just FYI, there will be a lot of building. But that's basically you trying to tame these lands to your will, and will. And I can't pick that up. Okay. Some of these will require different tools, which you can make eventually. Key phrase, eventually. Now, we get to the main menu here. Inventory. I basically have everything that I have been uh, making so far. Handful of insects, seeds, plant fiber, stone. Insects are consumable. They will put food in my belly, although not a lot. I'm at to 67 right now. I desperately need water, which is why we need to get out of this area here. Also, those sounds. Those sounds are concerning, but not too much, because I know what they are, and I know they will not harm me at this moment, anyway. I can run around, climb on stuff, or not climb on stuff if I absolutely have to. Oh, okay, I can do this. Oh, 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 ow. Nope, that went badly. <laughs> that went very badly. But... Could have been worse, I guess. Might as well grab some more stone stone, at least until later, will be a very necessary supply to have. And I'm getting more levels as time goes on. I have no idea what I set the uh, set the level to for this. I'll have to double check. I might have made it easier on myself than I should have. And if so, I'll change it and go back. But 
I'm kind of curious if there's anything up here. There isn't. I've never explored up these little buildings here because my main focus was getting out. But, uh... Whoop, okay. Oh, hello! <laughs> I managed it this time. I managed it. Haha. <laughs> Alright. So, I need to get out of here quickly. I should be running as fast as possible. So I need to get out of here. Oops, I'm out of stamina. This is also a thing that happens when you're out of stamina. If you run up ground for too much, you just run out of stamina and then you can't do anything. You can't do combat. If you've got stamina, you can't do dodging. You can't do anything. You just sit there, basically defenseless, more or less. Okay. This is the main menu here. You can recreate the character. You can copy the character. Event log, player list. So basically, if I was hosting a server, the, these two would actually matter, but I'm, I'm not yet, so we're not doing that. Okay. Now. Oh. Well, hello. And bye-bye? Yeah, that thing would have killed me. <laughs> would have killed me dead. Now I can collect more of these. Yep. Killed this guy dead for sure. And we can interact with this. Gods cursed this sandstorm. We were forced to take refuge before the wind scoured the skin from our faces. There is something in the storm. Beasts. We hear the skittering of their paws outside the ruins, and their howls mingled with the screaming winds. The men are scared. I've put them to work crafting rudimentary weapons and torches from the loose stones and rough plants that dot this place. I've yet to meet a beast that like fire, or the plight of the axe. Very true. Oh no. Killed her too. That's sad. Just left her up here, of all places. Jesus. Well, so much for uh, defending yourselves against the creature. Okay. Almost managed it, but not quite. Okay. So, this is where you learn you can make stuff. Kind of. But, uh... Technically doesn't walk you through how. So, I'm just collecting a lot of plant fiber at the moment. Because it's useful. Extremely useful. But at the same time, I haven't run into any... Ah! <laughs> branches! There we go. That's what I needed. Branches are essential in this exact moment. I'm going to collect as many as I can. Because I'm going to need as many as I can. Oh, they're all over the place now. Since I got over to this, where, to this area. Alright. I'm just going to get more and more thirsty as time goes on, huh? <laughs> it's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. I need to make sure I get water. It's going to be necessary very soon. Well, the good news is once you reach this place, going further is rather easy. Because it takes you directly to the path or rather, it takes you directly to the path that leads you out of the desert into the wastes. Your throat feels dry. I'm well aware. Yeah, I'm well aware. Good news is where there's plant life like this, there's tons of water to be found. Just only need to find it. Whoa. Something's fighting over there. That ain't good. Keep grabbing these. Because these are useful. Alright. Those are called shale backs. 
these particular ones I don't think are very violent. Yeah, they're not particularly violent, at least towards me. And aloe vera leaves. I'm collecting those because they are very useful in regards to healing. Which is a concept we'll get into later. But first, I need to get to water. Which is right there. But... There's also an exile camp, which I'll need to avoid for the moment, because I am not equipped to deal with it. At all, in fact. The Sentinels. There we are. Sentinels are right there. Drink water. The what? Okay. <laughs> I heard the combat music and was very concerned for about five seconds. All right, the sentinels right here are very clearly not human by the look of those head shapes, which begs the question, what were they? But that is a question we're not going to get into right now because, well, <laughs> I am not equipped to do that. Not even close to equipped. So, now that I've gotten the water in me, I can now focus on getting better food sources. Which I should start focusing on soon, in fact. Okay. Whoops, that was the wrong button. What I wanted to do was make a cleaver. A crudely crafted cleaver bunch of stone and stone hatchet and a stone pick can't do the skinning knife yet but we will soon craft a tool and clothe yourself that's something we'll have to focus on as well and that's easy because I have collected so many <laughs> of these plant fibers that I can just craft them all up real quick after my tools are done and then as I craft them, I will throw them on my person. So, Cleaver does some damage, but it is not a main weapon at all. In fact, Cleavers are only to chop into bodies to get meat out of them. Primarily. Clothe myself. Well, I mean, I only have a shirt. Relax. Calm down. I still haven't gotten pants on yet. <laughs> Pants are really the definition of clothing. Which is why, when I get home, I take those off. Because I don't want to be clothed anymore when I get home. Uh, anyway. This is for collecting meat. This is for collecting wood. And probably is better suited for a weapon. But, again, not the primary service of this tool. In the slightest pick for collecting stone which I can easily show you right now it does it slowly but at least does it there we go and you can collect a lot of stone a lot of fast which is good because you kind of need it to be able to move forward and cut up. Now we'll need wood as well. You can easily get it from these as well, which is good. These trees give a decent amount of wood and branches too, so you don't need to worry as much. Well, hello, Arcos the Wanderer. Another new one, eh? I can smell it on you. Veterans tend to smell just a little more like despair. I'm Arcos. Once a sailor, now a wanderer. You didn't think you were the only one, did you? <laughs> you should go up north. There's whole cities of exiles up there. Really? We can learn an emote from you? Polite clap. In the beginning, there were only a few of us. But now, it seems like fresh-faced fools are showing up every week. 
Not all of them are as friendly as I am, mind you. Watch your step. There are a lot of desperate people out there. Bracelets? You can't remove them. Saw one fool cut his arm clean off trying to get rid of it. He bled to death right there in the sand. Nasty business. Leave it on. You'll start to hear the voices soon enough, and then you'll start seeing the ghosts. I don't think the voices are for us. Not for us here and now. I think they were talking to somebody else. Back then. Wherever it was. Whenever it was. Those pillars keep us confined here. Some call it the curse wall, or the ghost fence, or just the boundary. Doesn't really matter what it's called, does it? I walked all the way around it once. Had to be careful not to cross it, of course. Once in the north, I saw a few people on the other side, wearing bracelets just like ours, with gems of amber. It makes you wonder. Hmm. I'm no scholar, but I've met a few who passed through. They all have mad theories about what the ruins scattered around here are. The Myriads, Giant Kings, Kari, Belusian Serpent Men. Do those names mean anything to you? Never mind. It's my experience that men who have their minds in the past get eaten by crocodiles in the present. True. Very true. Good luck, Exile. It's a tough world out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Now, these are the nonviolent shalebacks, as they're called. The ones over there, they're a little tinged red, and they're just as ornery in that they hate any intrusions upon their territory, and they will defend it rather violently. All right. And there's a crocodile. <laughs> not going to bother with that. At least not right now. What I am going to do... This is actually not a bad spot to make a house. At least I don't think so. Yeah. is isn't terrible. Maybe not the most ideal spot, but not terrible. And, since it's next to Arcos here, keeps me with a neighbor, at least. Sure. Alright. So, now we get into some of the later stuff. Now we have unspent points here. Um, this system is not unlimited. The, uh, top, the top level you can hit is 60. And eventually the points start drying up for that. But you can start putting them into any which spot you want. Right now I'm going to put at least three in strength because, uh, well, I'm going to need the help in combat. And uh, do a little in encumbrance. I don't see why not. Because encumbrance is really the ability to be able to hold on to really everything you're holding. So, uh, <laughs> gotta, gotta use that as much as you can. Now, when it comes to learning combat, feats is where you learn this. Feats is also where you learn a number of other things. Making stone swords... Making beds, making other tools, spending knowledge points, etc., etc., and learning how to build things, like houses and whatnot, and campfires, which is very good. Wooden boxes, yeah, we'll need that too. So, we'll need to be able to hold on to the stuff we can't carry. Now, when it comes to weapons, you can easily make them here. You begin to feel weak with hunger. I'm working on it. Trust me, I'm working on it. Trying to make as much twine as possible. And then make the sword. And then we make the campfire right after. Because we're going to need it. Because now... It's a dedicated weapon. 
I need a weapon. And we'll put this on my favorite spot to do that. There. Alright. We're going to go after this crocodile. It's going to be a little difficult considering I'm only going at it with this weapon, but it could be worse. This weapon is not foolproof, and I'll need to do a lot of dodging to be able to handle fighting this guy. I'm also going to be doing the base attack a little bit more. Because, uh... Okay. Whoop. Okay. Getting ready for a lunge. Had to move. And... Whoop. Okay. There we go. Slay. Booyah. Gained a level. Well, of course I did. I gained quite a bit of level. Because I am basically up to get another level right after. Alright. Cool. So. Now that I've done that. Might as well learn how to do stairs. Um, oh, I, I need food. I need food desperately bad. Like right now, in fact. I will start losing health if I don't do it now. So I'm going to set this to the side here. Uh, sure, why not? Right there. And really, I could use plant fiber, but I'm going to use wood for right now as a fuel source for the campfire. Because, yes, you'll need fuel. And then throw some feral flesh in there. And now we'll cook it up. I could eat more bugs, but... Eh, screw it up. Gives me something. Sounds like another crocodile's nearby. Where'd that be? No idea. Must be further across that way. Alright. Gives me a little bit of food. And... Cooked scraps of feral meat. There we go. Eat a filling meal. Well, more filling than what I was having prior. Plus, it lasts a lot longer, too. Alright. Now I'm full up on food. And have a decent source of water. Now I have not that much I need to worry about. At least for right now. I've more or less got myself into a comfortable position. Have neighbors over there, but they're not too friendly. A neighbor over there who's more friendly. And now, I guess we can start building up a uh, little place for myself. But that'll be... Probably in the next episode, <laughs> because I just noticed what time it is for the length of this episode. So, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together, and I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat, playing games and trying to carve out an existence for myself now that I have finally gotten pulled from that cross. And we will see... If I can get into some of the little scraps of story in the coming episodes for you.